In this lesson, we'll continue our review of reading test eight, section one. We're still on the fourth passage out of five. This is the dual passage. And if you watched the previous video, we only answered passage one questions. Remember, this is the a series of debates between Stephen Douglas and Abraham Lincoln, and they're debating each other. And we know it's always this dual passage, the same subject, but a different perspective. And so now we're going to read two for the first time. And so this is Lincoln responding to the claims Douglas has made in complaining of what I said in my speech at Springfield, in which he says I accepted my nomination for the senatorship. So he is Douglas. He again quotes that portion in which I said that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Let me say a word in that regard to that matter. He tries to persuade us there must be some varieties in different institutions of the State of the Union, that variety necessarily proceeds from variety of soil, climate, or the face of the country, and that differences in natural features of the states. I agree with that. And so here he's trying to clarify his position that he is not against, and again, I hope you've already read one, he is not against the division of free and slave states. But the argument that he is making, again, he's clarifying his position. The, the position he is making, though, is that the expansion of that. And let's see. So here, read around line 70, it is worthwhile to observe we have generally had comparative peace upon the slavery issue and that there has been no cause for alarm until it was excited by the effort to spread it. This is his argument, to spread it into new territory. Whenever it has been limited by its present bounds, the, the current division, there is and no effort to spread it. There has been peace, and so that's really the key. He's saying he's not against the division of free and slave states. He's really against the expansion, and he's clarifying his argument. He, he feels that Douglas has misrepresented his position, and so we're going to answer only passage two questions. So the first question: This is just a word in context. What does element mean in line sixty-seven? So this is a very specific question. So this is the beginning of a new paragraph. And I'll read just the end of the last one. They are props that hold up the house and sustain the union. But has it been so with this element of slavery? Have we all not always had quarrels and difficulties over it? So this element is really sort of like this issue of slavery. Let's look for a synonym. Certainly not an ingredient or environment. Is it factor or quality? It's really a factor. It's the issue, this, this issue, this factor of slavery. And let's see, 36 and 37, I always scan down. This is a two-part question. Based on passage two, Lincoln would most likely agree with this claim about controversy over the slavery. And so remember, I read part of it where he even conceded this much is true. And you can almost predict it that he really is against the expansion. I don't, and so the claim that he would agree on is probably is, is how he's clarifying his current position over slavery. Let's take a look. We know it's between 56 and 86. 56 and 86. And 56, we see I have agreed with that here in the very beginning. Have these matters produced any difficulties? Not at all. And let's just keep reading. Remember, the question is asking, he would likely agree about the controversy of slavery. So even though we do see, I agree with this, have these matters ever produced any difficulty among this? So let's keep this open. Remember, they always have to fit both parts, though. But then you look around 74. Whenever it has been limited to its present bounds, there has been no effort to spread it. It is slavery. There has been peace. So this also could work as well. So remember, they both have to fit together. So that could be the evidence. Remember, for this, when he says, I agree with that, this the point he's really making, I think, is that states all have their own institutions and they're, they're, they're independent, and he agrees with that. But there's really no evidence here about the slavery, though, right? But here, in 74, whenever it has been limited, slavery, to its present bounds, there has been no effort to spread it, it has been peace. So this one definitely touches upon the slavery. But again, they both have to work together. So let's take a look at the choices for 36 then. It can be ended, slavery, only if the northern states act unilaterally on its own to abolish throughout. That's definitely not its position. 
it would abate, and abate means to stop or be reduced, if attempts to induce slavery to regions where it's not practiced were abandoned. This is definitely his position. And so where does it say that? You know, even though he says, I agree in 56, he's not talking about slavery. He's really talking about that states have their own features. But down in 74, whenever slavery has been limited to its present bounds, no effort to spread it there has been peace. So it perfectly fits. And you just have to be careful on these two part questions. It is C. And now at the very end, we just have a few questions. And this is where we can compare and contrast. It's a lot easier after you've done them independently. So 39. Which choice identifies a central tension between the two? Again, we don't even have to really rec like refer back. Douglas proposes changes to federal policies, but Lincoln argues that changes would not enjoy popular support. Definitely not on point. How about B? Douglas expresses concerns about the economic impact of abolition, but Lincoln dismisses those as irrelevant, not accurate either. Let's take a look at C. Douglas criticizes Lincoln for finding fault with the Constitution, right? He, he's almost misrepresenting him, but he does he's critical because it says like a, sta a house divided cannot stand, and Lincoln argues that his criticism misrepresents. This is definitely the choice. And let's see, we've got a, oh, you know what? I skipped number 38. I'm just gonna go back and do this right now. This is actually still part of passage two, but it's just a word in context. So what does nature mean in line 84? Do you think that nature of man will be changed that the same causes that produce agitation at one time will not have the same effect on another? So this is really, do you think sort of that the nature, sort of like the makeup of man, right? What he's made of. So let's take a look. The nature of man, force, simplicity, world, it's definitely character. The, you can always substitute that. The character of man, the makeup, the composition, it is D. And then we'll just do the last two. Again, these are just compare and contrast questions number 40. When you see a question like this, what do they both discuss? This is not specific because they, we know they have difference of opinions, but what do they both have in common? It's always going to be a very broad answer for number 40. They both discuss slavery and the expansion of the union. This is the right answer, right? Because Douglas is arguing, well, you know, why can't we continue this and the expansion of the union has prospered? And Lincoln is stating that the current status is fine, but the expansion is where we have all this dissension and this, this dispute. And so the answer is A. And the last one, number 41, in context of each passage as a whole, the questions in 25 to 27 and 1, and 67 to 69, what's the function of each, all right? So we know this is a debate, by the way. So 25 to 27, this is Douglas speaking, and then 67 to 69, what's the purpose of each of those? All right, and so let's take a look at 25 to 27. Now I come back to the question, why cannot this union exist forever, divided into free and slave states as our father made it? So he's saying, like, why can't it exist? He's really debating Lincoln and saying, you know, why can't we just continue this? And let's take a look at what Lincoln says in 67. But it has been so with this element, we, right, this factor of slavery. Have we not always had quarrels and difficulties over it? And when we cease to have quarrels, and when will we cease to have quarrels over it? Like causes produce like effects. And he goes on to say we've had comparative peace without the expansion. And so remember, this is a debate. These are both sort of rhetorical questions they're asking, and they're debating each other. So what's the function? Like, what's the purpose they're each trying to do? Let's take a look at the choices. Cast doubts on each other's sincerity. So sincerity is really not accurate. It's not that they're not being sincere. They're really sort of casting doubt on the argument, not the sincerity. Are they criticizing the methods? Again, not really. Reproach, this is a good word, means to criticize the other's actions. Again, not the actions. I mean, the reason all of these look tempting is you see these first words, cast out, criticize, reproach. All of those could work, but you have to pay attention. It's not the sincerity, not the methods, not the actions. Undermine, right, which means to attempt to weaken or contradict the other's argument. This is what they're doing. It's a debate. And so the answer is D.